women's health and pelvic health, it's not just physiotherapy. It's not just the physical part. It's holistic. So for me, I went and um, I went into the, the mind body portion of it. So I studied um, like the psychology of it, the like sex therapy of it, the um, how it impacts you on a mental level, on an emotional level. Women, we're governed by our cycles, right? Like at every different week of the month, there's something different happening hormonally, right? And that then, then impact you on an emotional level because your, your, your hormones and your emotions are connected, right? Which is then connected to like what you feel like eating. Generally about the 50% mark, women have period pain, right? Which is completely not normal. So it's, it's not, not normal? No. Okay. So period pain is common, but it's not normal. This person might be what we call vata, which is like air and ether. This person might be pitta, which is fire and water. This person might be kapha, which is earth and water. And each person's constitution necessitates a different diet or a different, you know, what food is going to sit well with you. We have actually found that gluten and eggs and dairy are the three biggest causes of pain in women with endometriosis. It's supposed to drop smoothly, but what actually happens in a lot of women who have migraines or who have period problems or like gut issues, it plummets. But all this pain, it's not normal. Period pain is not normal. Migraines are not, are, are not normal. Stomach problems, all these stomach, stomach aches and, you know, gas, bloating. It's common, but it's not normal. It's not enough to just be spiritual. The physical is important too. Right. The mental is important too. The emotional is important too. We're just going to keep bringing people into the light. And all that darkness, all that darkness in this world, that suffering that in this world, we can end that. Yo, what's up, tribe? Welcome to another episode of Young, Black and Vegan. I'm your host, Keith Terrell. And Today we are in Cusco, Peru. I'm actually on a retreat right now. And today I'm sitting down with Heba Shahid. She's a leading women's health physical therapist in the world, not just the city, the world, Craig, and so much more. I'm gonna actually let her tell you about all of the great things that she does. And we're gonna dive into this conversation and some amazing food. We're at Greenpoint in Cusco, Peru, which is one of the best vegan restaurants in the world. One of my favorites. So. I'm happy to be here. We're going to dive in and have some good food, some good conversation. Let's get it. Let's Heather, get it. What's going on? My sis. <laughs> My welcome, brother. Welcome to Young Black and Vegan. So tell me um, about what you do. I flubbed it a little bit, but you're the number one in the world leading women's health physical therapist. And what else? So I, there's a lot of things that I do. I wear a lot of hats. But the thing that I've been doing the longest is I am a women's and pelvic health physical therapist or physiotherapist, as we say in Australia. So I am originally from Sydney, Australia. I have been in this field for the last 15 years. Um, I work in the area of gynecology, obstetrics and colorectal. Um, I've had my own private practice in Sydney, um, thriving practice. I worked with leading gynecologists, leading obstetricians, leading surgeons. Um, and I had that practice for probably about, uh, let's say, seven to eight years. Um, and I guess from 2018, I have been a lecturer at um, universities in Sydney where I teach and train young, budding physiotherapists into women's health. Um, and the other thing that I do is I travel around the world and I train um, physiotherapists in countries across the East who don't have access to women's health. I train them into women's health. So I've developed master's program that I am currently in the process of delivering um, across the world. And in 2024, it's, it's growing and expanding. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, you know, high level what I do. Yeah, nice. So how does one become the leading women's health physical therapist in the world? <laughs> how does one become that? Drive, discipline, devotion, passion. Um, so I guess for me, um, I started off as you know a physical therapist, and then what actually happened was I had a massive injury to my pelvis um, in my first year out of university, in my first year out into the workforce, and um, it sent me into a trajectory of working and learning all about the pelvis and all the things that can go wrong and how to heal it because I was looking for healing for myself and then it kind of came about that um, you know because I had such a deep understanding at a on a professional level but also on a personal level when you have that personal sort of journey through it it makes you better at it you know 
And so, you know, I threw myself into it. I learned from the best of the best, from everyone all, all over the world, from the US, from the UK, from Europe. And definitely Australia, is, is, we are at the top um, of the world in, in terms of evidence-based education um, in physiotherapy. And I had one of the best mentors who, now she says to me, Heba, stop calling me a mentor, we're friends. You've already, you've already surpassed me. And I'm like, ah. Um, because for me, like women's health and pelvic health, it's not just physiotherapy. It's not just the physical part, it's holistic. So for me, I went, and, um, I went into the, the mind-body portion of it. So I studied um, like the psychology of it the like sex therapy of it, the um, how it impacts you on a mental level, on an emotional level, how it impacts you on a spiritual level. So can you break some of that down from what you found? You know, I, I studied as much as I could from a physical therapy point of view. Then I um, went and studied psychology. So I, 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 I wanted to learn about how um, all of these dysfunctions that occur in the pelvis impact women at a psychological level and an emotional level and then how it impacts them like kind of in, in a society way in a relationships way in a family sort of way and in, in a community and it's kind of like I wanted to be able to provide a service where it wasn't just a physical healing it was like I'm gonna we're gonna get to the root of all of these things right because sometimes the physical doesn't get better no matter how much physical therapy you give someone it doesn't get better um, and then I went in to study nutrition as well so I did a women's health specific nutrition coaching certification actually I did two I did two because I wanted to learn like the immune side of it as well um, so then so then when women come to me I provide a comprehensive service yes we do the physical hands-on things yes there's an exercise component yes there's touching and, and all of that but then there's okay how what's how's your nutrition affecting you what's happening in your emotional life what's happening in your relationship how is this affecting your work how is this affecting your family um, and so then it becomes like a coaching relationship um, so that they can live a more integrated life and they can kind of target their issue um, and, and, and kind of heal from it holistically and if things come up again um, they kind of are empowered to know where they can go to um, you know to alleviate their symptoms and you know they, they kind of understand that it's not just a pain it's more than that it's there's, there's more there's more going on in her body in her mind in her psyche in her soul i'm sure it is case dependent depending on the individual that you're speaking to but are there like specifics that you can point out that women who may be dealing with these issues may look to yeah so like i guess the main issues that women kind of face is that what you're asking like what kind of issues are the, that women face yes. so the biggest ones i would say are like in her menstrual cycle so like menstrual sort of issues um, you know, women, we're governed by our cycles, right? Like at every different week of the month, there's something different happening hormonally, right? And that then, then impact you on an emotional level because your, your, your hormones and your emotions are connected, right? Which is then connected to like what you feel like eating or how you feel like moving your body or how you interact in your relationships or how you show up at work, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, menstrual issues are huge, like period pain, you know, gut dysfunctions because of menstrual dysfunction. I would say menstrual issues are definitely huge. And then I kind of see women in the journey of like their life phases. So like, you know, preconception, in pregnancy, you know, as she gives birth, in the postnatal journey, being a mother, you know, like they're, they're all transformative life phases that women go through and women change. You know, in each of those life phases, women are changing. You're a different woman in every life phase, you know. So um, understanding what's happening for her emotionally and mentally and spiritually, you know, in a so socially um, and being able to support her in each of those, each of those life phases. So, so yeah, that's kind of where it is. And so I've heard that um, from different women, cycles should last like a certain amount of time, but based off of how you eat, you might prolong it. Can you kind of talk about the connection between nutrition and the menstrual cycle, how long it should last, and also like things that could cause more pain or alleviate some of that pain? Absolutely, we can definitely talk about that. Okay, so let's talk about what's normal first, right? So a healthy menstrual cycle lasts about let's say 28 to 30 days, okay, give or take, 28 to 30 days. So, you know, if you've got a month, it's pretty much, it's, it's a monthly cycle, right? And each week there's 
a certain hormonal function that's occurring, right? So we have like the we have the follicular phase, and then we have the luteal phase. We have a phase where um, a woman bleeds, so she has her period. So that's, let's say that could be like three to seven days. That's kind of average. Um, and then she moves into this, the, the next week, which is kind of her hormones are going up and um, she's going into ovulation phase. So she's the most fertile in this, peri in this, in this week, in this junction. And then after she's ovulated, um, so this, this first half, we call it the follicular phase. And then after she's ovulated, we call it the luteal phase. And that's when um, the lining of the uterus is breaking down, it's shedding, um, and we're leading back into having a period. Or if she has fallen pregnant, because in that time, if she's fallen pregnant, then that kind of, the hormones kind of actually escalate upwards. So what, what kind of things can go wrong? Um, so you can have sh short cycles, so you can have periods that maybe it's a day or two, or you can have more commonly longer cycles. So women can show up with like 10 day periods, for example. Cycles can vary in length. And then the, the, the other main sort of thing that we see a lot of, which is, I mean, the research kind of shows that it's like 50 to 80% of women, even like up to 80%, but like, Generally, about the 50% mark, women have period pain, right? Which is completely not normal. So it's, it's not, not normal? No. Okay. So period pain is common, but it's not normal. Not normal at all. What causes the period pain and what can be done about that? So there's so many different things that can cause period pain. Um, definitely this high stress lifestyle that a lot of us lead, you know, juggling so many balls and not having that downtime, not having that time to like unwind and integrate and be wholesome mm -hmm. um, but definitely food is a huge one so like eating crap basically right a lot of you know the junk food the processed food not eating what's right for your body um, so like I, I follow um, a tradition of Ayurveda which is traditional Indian medicine thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and traditional Indian medicine looks at each person and their constitution, right? And what, um, what's right for them. So like, you know, th this person might be what we call vata, which is like air and ether. This person might be pitta, which is fire and water. This person might be kapha, which is earth and water. And each person's constitution necessitates a different diet or a different, you know, what food is going to sit well with you, right? And sometimes we don't understand ourselves. We don't know what sits right with us. And sometimes we're eating something that isn't right for our constitution. How can women find out what their constitution is to find out what they should be eating and omitting from the diet? So if, if you're interested in the Ayurvedic lifestyle, um, which I am deeply engrossed in, um, there's different ways that you can find it, but usually you would want to see an Ayurvedic practitioner. So either a, an Ayurvedic lifestyle coach who's able to assess that. Usually they take your pulse, they look at your eyes, your tongue, a few different things um, to, assess, to assess that. They ask you a whole bunch of questions about your, um, you know, your, your body, your mind. It, the, the, the great thing about Ayurveda is that it's not just your body. Your constitution is made up of your body, mind and spirit mm -hmm. together. Right? And so an Ayurvedic lifestyle coach or an Ayurvedic doctor would be able to tell you. There's some quizzes online, but they can, they're not fully accurate. They can be semi-accurate. That's a great way to figure out which constitution you are. And then based on that, they often have recommendations of what you know, a Vata constitution should have, what a Pitta constitution should have, right? Being that there are different constitutions, are there any commonalities that women should definitely eliminate this from your diet? and these foods are most likely beneficial for you? So overall, wholesome food is always better for you. Food from nature, right? Anything processed is not great. Like it's just, it's just gonna wreak havoc on your immune system, on your endocrine system, huge. Like because we're governed so much by hormones, like yes, men are also governed by hormones, but not to the extent that women are because we're constantly fluctuating. Right. So um, and even within the cycle, you're fluctuating. So sometimes certain foods in this half of your cycle will sit better with you than in this half of the cycle. Similar with movement and exercise. You know, there's certain types of exercise that you can do in this part of your cycle. And then in this part of your cycle, it might not sit right with you. You know, so it's really about knowing your body and understanding your body. And the only way that you're going to know and understand it is to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. And learn from 
you know, resources, learn from coaches, learn from doctors, whatever. Basically, if it's not from nature, if it's been milled, if it's been whatever, right, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not going to be great, right? So the fresher, the more, um, the more from nature it is, the better it is. However, in saying that, is there something that's across the board good for all three constitutions? I can't say that there is a blanket thing because um, everyone is different. And then not only that, not only is your constitution different, in Ayurveda, we don't just look at what your constitution is, we look at what your dysfunction is as well. There's two things that we look at. Because you might be, for example, you might be the fire one, which is Pitta, but your dysfunction is in Vata, which is the air one, right? So like, Pitta people can usually eat anything and, and be pretty cool. Like they have really great digestion, um, you know, that they can eat things and it'll pass easily, right? But if they're in a vata imbalance, that can throw them out. And so then that digestion is, is all over the place. And this is what I see in my, or what I would see in my clinical, like most of my clients would often sh be the pitta type because it's like the type A women, go, 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 you know, very driven, very motivated, work hard, do, do basically the ones that are doing everything. You know, we're trying to juggle everything. Um, and then they show up in my clinic and their digestion is gone, their menstrual cycle is gone, like in, they've got horrific period pain, about long, heavy periods, um, you know, endometriosis is a really common thing that I would see and that's basically a condition that's an inflammatory condition that causes pelvic dysfunction and gut dysfunction. So, so endometriosis is definitely a common thing that I would see. Um, so yeah, like we have to kind of look at who you are mm -hmm. and also what's going wrong and then help you get back to who you are. But that's holistic. Okay, well, yeah. I want to touch on the endometriosis because I actually dated a couple of women who had that. And like while we dated, they ended up adopting the vegan lifestyle temporarily and it alleviated that. So I want to touch on how diet affects your body like from the uh, women's standpoint. Profoundly. Right? We got some food, so we about to dive in. Cheers, Let's dive cheers in. to some of the best vegan food in the world. Oh my God, green point, yes. woo! Let's get it, let's get it. Mmm. That's good. So endometriosis affects one in 10 women that we know of. I would say it's even more common than that, especially today, right? And it's an inflammatory condition it affects the gut, it affects the pelvis, and it can really spread to your entire body, right? And it is debilitating. So I am one of those women. I had endometriosis, and I've had the surgery for it to remove it. I had severe period pain, like, from when I started my cycle, when I was 14, right up until I had the surgery in 2014, I think, which I feel like I didn't really need to have. At that point, I wasn't really sure what was going on. Diet changed my life. It changed my life. So I adopted a gluten-free vegan diet at that point. Um, and it changed me. Like even just within, I would say even within um, four to six weeks, like I felt like my pain was like 20 out of 10, mm -hmm. come down to like two or three out of 10. Wow. You know, and that was like pain throughout my cycle. Forget the pain, in the, the pain in the cycle was like a million out of 10, right? But outside of my cycle, there was all this sort of pain. So, so for women who haven't done any type of dietary um, intervention for endo at all, I usually, we usually start with like an elimination diet so that we can figure out what it is that's going on in her body. So usually what I would do is I would get women to fill in what I call a food, mood, poop diary. So for five days, I look at what she normally eats for five days and then what her mood is like in those, t in those times and then whether she's going to empty her bowels right and what's happening there as well and then from that based on that I can already start to tell oh every time she has that gluten she gets a migraine every time she has that cup of milk she gets constipated you know you start to draw the parallels right so what kind of diet works initially elimination diet so we go we, we get rid of gluten we get rid of dairy we go vegetarian as much as we can cooked foods because sometimes the raw food is really hard on the, on the gut. Um, so it's like cooked, you know, vegetarian, vegan, because eggs are also an, a, big, a big issue for, we have actually found that gluten and eggs and dairy are the three biggest causes of pain in women with endometriosis. 
Yeah. So we get rid of those three and then we work through it, you know, and then we see what's going on in her body. So that's, that's usually the first three big ones that they can work with. And usually just eliminating those three things or like adopting a vegan lifestyle, because it's pretty much a vegan lifestyle. It, minus eggs, minus dairy, right? Um, within three weeks, sometimes they can see a massive change in their pain. Six weeks, eight weeks, definitely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank you for breaking that down. Let's break down this food though. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I've had it before. It is amazing. What did you get? I got ravioli. Yeah. Um, it looks like basil and tomato, and I think there's mushrooms in there. So, yeah, and maybe this is a spinach? I'm not sure. We're gonna, we're gonna some kind of green. Some greens on top. Some kind of green. Yo, and <laughs> this matcha is one of the best matchas that I've had. In yeah. So good. Mm. That's good. That is good. In. Let's dive in. Mm. Right? Mm. So good. Green point. Green point is on point. That's what's good for the hormones, the plant based diet. Yeah. Mm. Fully plant based. Fully plant based is good mm. for the diet. best. Get rid of that red meat. Migraines, that's something that I find is common with a lot of women as well. Mm -hmm. Is that directly related to food or is it other things that are usually going on in the body contributing to that? Thank you. Yeah, so migraines again are hormonal. So the most common migraines that we see are like what we call pre-menstrual migraines. So in this, let's say three to 10 days before her period begins, mm -hmm a lot of women get hit with this massive migraine and it's because of the drop in progesterone. Um, now, food is heavily related to your progesterone levels, right? Break down so, that, what's progesterone? So progesterone is one of the female hormones that, um, as, so in your period it's quite low and then as you move through the cycle it rises, right? Yeah. And then after ovulation it, it's peaked, right? And then in the week before the period it it's supposed to drop smoothly, but what actually happens in a lot of women who have migraine or who have period problems or like gut issues, it plummets. Mm -hmm. And when it plummets, that huge plummet, you get, you get this death migraine, basically. Um, B vitamins. So a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of women, um, they're not getting enough B vitamins in their diet, mm. right? But all this, this is all B vitamins, all these greens, that's all B vitamins. Greens. If you don't have greens, you're not having greens in your diet or not enough plants in your diet, you're not getting the B vitamins, right? Mm. It's related to that. Migraines can also be related to stress. Yeah. Huge related to stress. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. So would you say it's, a, it's a, a common thing, but not normal, or is it a normal thing as well? Okay, my premise, my, my, the way that I, my belief system is pain especially repetitive pain like that is not normal. Mm -hmm. But it's so common because we're so out of balance. Mm. We're so out of balance, we're, we're out of harmony. Right. Right. And the reason I know this is from personal experience. Like when I was young, I, I, was, I was a hugely stressed out kid. I, was, I, I took on the emotions of everybody. Like I'm just, I'm such a feeler. Like I just feel everybody's pain. Right. And then I would take it on and I'd hold it on. And, and I would be getting all these migraines from the stress of like everything. But the more I, you know, came into yoga, came into meditation, came into knowing myself and knowing what's my emotion and what's other people's emotions and all of that, the more I worked on stress management, breathing, I hardly get migraines. I'll get a migraine, like now, or if, usually it's just like one migraine a month. When I was younger, I would be like four or five days migraine. And that's from stress, emotions, you know, love, like a lack of love. You know, like cortisol, your stress hormone, we can lower that just from like oxytocin, like bonding, love, hugs, yeah. good food, you know. But we live in a society where just go, 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 so stressed and that connection is missing. Right. Connection to humans, connection to the earth, connections to food, connection to yourself, you know. So when we bring all of that back, connection to God, or you're the universe or the spirit or whatever you want to call it, the higher power, 
When we bring all of that back and we come back to our true nature, that's what's normal. But all this pain, it's not normal. Period pain is not normal. Migraines are not, are, are not normal. Stomach problems, all these stomach, stomach aches and, you know, gas, bloating, it's common, but it's not normal, you know? And we need to change that language. We can't keep saying, oh, it's normal to have stomach aches after you, you know, have, have a, an ice cream. Oh, it's, you know, it's normal, it's normal. No, it's common because we're out of balance. But we can bring balance back to ourselves and normalize having good health, holistically, mind, body, soul, social, yeah, spiritual. And, and you know, that's another thing on that note is language is so important because if we keep saying something is normal, then we put up with it. Mm -hmm. And we don't go seeking a solution for it. We think we need to live with this. This is, this is normal for me. I have to live with this for the rest of my life. It's normal for me to have period pain. It's normal for me to have stomach ache. It's normal for me to not be able to walk this much without something happening, yeah. you know? Yeah. But if we change the language to, okay, it's common, it's, but it's not normal. This now gives you hope. It now gives you it allows you to take action to alleviate your suffering. It allows you to have self-compassion, right? And so many of us, we show compassion to others, mm -hmm. but we don't show ourselves that self-compassion. You know, we give, 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 um, that we don't give to ourselves. So if we, if we change that language, mm -hmm. then we can give that ourselves that same self-compassion and then we can heal ourselves and connect to everything. Facts. Yeah, I don't know if y'all know, but Habit's on here dropping bars. <laughs> bars. It's a vibe. I mean, you, you're bringing it out in me, Keith. Hey, it's, <laughs> it's in there. It, it has to come out. <laughs> Share with the world. That's it. So I'm curious, what does Habit's self-care routine look like? Ooh, what's my self-care routine look like? Okay, so um, for me, my connection to God is number one. Mm -hmm. Connection to spirit is number one. So I always make sure that I'm grounded and centered in him. That he is leading me, that I'm in service to him. And anything that I put out into this world is purely for him, mm -hmm. right? And then because of that, I honor myself and my body is like a temple. So I take care of it. It's not enough to just be spiritual. The physical is important too. Right. The mental is important too. The emotional is important too, right? So what's my self-care? Okay, um, meditation, every day, I have to. Connecting with, the, with nature, connecting with myself, knowing that I am a part of nature, you know? Grounding myself in nature, knowing that I'm, I'm both. I'm, I'm in the ground, I'm in the world, but I'm also in the heavens and in the spirit. So I do yoga every day. Every morning I have my routine. I'm a gym, I'm a gymie, I love gym, so I like pushing weights, um, you know, I, I, I love my weights, I gotta do it, three, three, four times a week, um, I'm in the gym, Pilates, oh, I love Pilates, I'm a Pilates instructor, so I've, I've done my whole Pilates certification, I'm an integrative yoga therapist as well, so like, everything that I teach, I embody, you know, practice what you preach, right, Right. I'm, I'm very disciplined about my food, right, um, and I'm, very, I'm an intuitive eater, so I'm, I'm like, I call it in, like, what, what, it was, what does my body need right now? Mm -hmm. what, is it, what is it calling me to have right now? And then I honor it. I don't guilt trip myself. I find a lot of people, like, have this war that they do with food. Um, I shouldn't have this, and then they'll go and have it, and then they beat themselves up about it. Right. I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do, I, what do I feel like right now? And then I honor it, and then, and then that's it. I'm in the moment. You know what I mean? Like I live in the moment, I eat in the moment, I move in the moment, breathe in the moment, all of that sort of thing. Um, friendships, connections, authentic connections, you know, people. Um, I stay away from anything toxic, toxic food, toxic people, toxic environment. To I mean, I left Australia because it was just a buildup of toxicity for me, you know? Um, and now I travel, I'm a nomad. I travel around the world. I meet beautiful people like you. Um, create a family of soul sisters and brothers. Right. You know? And that's self-care for me. It's like making sure that I create 
these authentic, beautiful connections. I feel like that's so important. And for my mind, I mean, I used to see a psychologist regularly and I, really, I highly recommend it if you're, if you've got a lot of trauma that you haven't come to terms with. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I've come to terms with a lot of my trauma, so I'm, I'm, I'm very good at knowing how to like self-soothe. Right. Um, but, but if you haven't and you need that, I feel like that's definitely something like, when I, before I was seeing a psychologist every week and then I weaned up to once every three weeks, but I, I made sure that I was grounded in that, like mm -hmm. working through my traumas, working through my triggers, you know, all of that. But now I've gotten to the point where everything's like glimmers. I, I say glimmers, you know, triggers are like your negative stuff. Right. Now things are like glimmers. It's like, I see the good in everything. Yeah. The hope, the beauty, the life force, the power, you know, everything is good. Yeah. You know. I just love how passionate you are. Aww. Yeah, I'm sure anybody that's in your like soul family stays motivated. Oh, 100%. And like, yeah. it's like a responsibility for me. Like, I feel like God, God gave me this power, this passion and all this love. Like, yeah. I've been through a lot in my life, Keith. Like, I've, been, I've had grief, like mm -hmm. severe grief. I've had severe pain, you know, severe suffering. Like, stuff people couldn't imagine going through has happened to me. Right. And I could live in that, you know? Like, I could live in all the oppression that I went through. Mm -hmm. And I could be a victim because, like, you know, like I could be, but it's a choice, Nothing you know? Nothing about you strikes me as a victim. Yeah, yeah. well, you yeah. know, you've been through stuff, right? Yeah, you've been through things, but, but you... it's a choice. Right. Like, do I want to live in that? Or do I want to live in love, in peace, in harmony? Do I want to live in alignment? Do I want to be happy and joyful? Yes, I do. And then, like, my vibration is going to affect everyone around me. Yeah. If I lived in the vibration of, like, all the suffering that I've been through, I'm gonna bring everyone down. Right. So I'm not gonna do that. Like, we're all about vibrating up. We're all about lifting the frequency. We're all about lifting the consciousness. We're all about the love. We're all about the harmony, the peace, you know? Yeah. So I have a responsibility because my energy is gonna bring people into that energy. And then those people are gonna bring that more people. And so if I'm a being of light, then I'm bringing more people into the light and love. We're just going to keep bringing people into the light. And all that darkness, all that darkness in this world, that suffering that in this world, we can end that. Yeah. Like I look at it as like I'm one part of the, I'm, a, I'm one part of the tapestry of life, you know, and I have a circle of influence. And then that circle of influence has a circle of influence, it's like spiral, you know, like um, concentric circles, right. you know. And if we all thought like that and we all acted like that, we took that intention and we put it into action, the world will change, you know? Right. Hit us with some, some Heba tips for life. This can apply to women and men, yeah. but you know, you touched on a lot already, but give, give, us, give us a few of your, your bars. Number one, be authentic. Find out who you are know who you are, love who you are, accept who you are, and live it. Be authentic. Nobody can be you except you. And who cares what anyone else thinks? Because there's always going to be people who are going to think other, right? But you do you, and be you, and just be totally authentic, totally sincere, and live it, embody it. That's number one. Anytime I stepped out of authenticity, I felt like self-betrayal and it ate me up, mm -hmm. you know, and it wreaks havoc on everything, you know, so own yourself, whoever you are, only you know who you are, nobody else knows who you are. Facts. Two. Number two, courage, mm -hmm. okay, be courageous, be brave, take action, say yes, and if it's not a hell yes, don't do it. Forget about it. It's nothing. Yeah. Right? Go wherever you want to do, whoever you want to be, wherever you want to go, have the courage to do it. And be confident. Be assertive. Go for it. Right? Take courage to be vulnerable. The vulnerability is a huge part of courage. Mm -hmm. Let down all those guards. Number three, compassion. Compassion to others and compassion to yourself. 
the world is like a worm and the essence of the worm if you think mother nature we think the mother divine mother eternal mother the world is like a worm and we're all being held inside this worm and we're all connected and the essence of the worm and the essence of the divine mother and the eternal mother and divine feminine and all of that is compassion love comes into compassion but compassion is even it's bigger than love it embodies everything it's, it's love, it's mercy, it's honor, it's dignity, it's integrity, it's all of that stuff. So compassion to yourself, self-compassion. Stop beating yourself up about stuff. It happened. Live in the moment. Um, and then compassion to others because whatever you put out, you're not doing it for, for yourself, but whatever you put out, it's gonna come back to you a million fold. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is resilience. Hard things are going to happen. And, and the more authentic you are, the more courageous you are, and the more compassion you have, the harder life is going to get. And you have to, you've got to step into it. You've got to step into that zone, right? You've got to build that resilience. You have to be patient. Whatever life hits you with, it's just another opportunity to grow and another opportunity to embody and be more powerful. You know, you actually get more power from the hard stuff that happens? Mm -hmm. Come on, like think about it. And who doesn't want to be powerful? Who doesn't want to be embodied? Who doesn't want to be divine and eternal, right? Look, I'm motivated. I don't know if y'all motivated. Y'all should be motivated. If not, <laughs> listen to this again.